my name is jinan and i am from kerala india and uh, i have been exploring the uh, the crisis of modern human beings that has been my basic uh, exploration but uh, i began to encounter it when i started uh, when i was doing my engineering degree in third year fourth year uh, i began to start feeling that why is that we are only learning about the western uh, you know knowledge that was my you know as if nobody else did anything it was only the western names that uh, come across all the time and so it was kind of uh, not that it bothered me too much but somehow that was a point that i began to wonder then i also found that when i looked around in my institution i could not find even one person truly committed to learning uh, this is not only among students but also among professors you know i am not you know there are good people they want to teach you and all that but commitment to learning has nothing to do with this you know commitment to learning means somebody who is actually interested in wanting to know the world not for exams not for academics but as an existential quest you know this i found completely missing in the modern in the paradigm so i actually took two decisions at that time one was never to do anything that i don't like to do and never to do nine to five job you know and then i uh, of course i did the degree and then i started uh, learning design and uh, so design learning was a very very different thing because that first time i encountered people who were truly interested in learning primarily because there was no teaching and there was uh, there was uh, uh, you know experience was the basis in which most of the things were happening there people were doing and you know so so i began to actually uh, began to take deeper interest in understanding what is the software of learning what makes certain places Uh, you know uh, conducive for learning and other places not and but the other thing that i i began to encounter in my design education is that uh, that again all over the world western aesthetic sense is being uh, imparted you know so uh, so what you have today is that uh, you know the modern world is nothing but you know distortions of western ideas of beauty knowledge and all that you know so this is very very disturbing for me i wanted to understand what is culture because to my mind at least today i have understand that uh, three pillars of culture is uh, beauty knowledge and value law that you know and these are contextual you can you cannot make a universal monolithic idea about this you know beauty is contextual because it is a context that awakens based on what is in the context and it is also biological it is it is rooted in our own biology beauty is not a choice actually uh, unconsciously what you do turns out to be beautiful among rural tribal communities because they don't disturb the 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 way nature functions you know because if you find that all around in nature what you see is existence is beauty only you know everything is in its apt aptness i actually what i call as beauty is aptness in action aptness in formation you know uh, so well i will sh- cut short my uh, 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 this thing little bit and i began to actually work with indigenous illiterate communities because i somehow felt that the traditional indian craftsmen artisans have much more to teach us teach me than me giving them something you know because as a designer i began to work with them initially thinking that i can help them out with my design you know but within few days i realized that these people are thousands of years of experience they have who am i who have just learned for two years going and telling them what to do you know i felt it was absolute arrogance you know and this is what the whole ngo format is that only you know how the ngos go and try to save the uh, indigenous communities i find it absurd because what what do they know actually you know about anything for that matter yeah but they have arrogance of well i was also i'm also exactly the same thing because i am educated in that sense you know uh, but living with rural tribal communities was very very important and it completely changed my perception number one i found that this insight was very very important which shifted my journey which is literates learn the word illiterates learn the world that made all the difference to my um, uh you know journey because uh the whole literacy lit- literates 
are actually alienated from life. In fact, what I today feel is that uh, even now they talk about artificial intelligence. To my mind, the illiterate mind is artificial intelligent mind. Artificial, it's artificial brain actually because it is not formed the way nature has intended our, bomb, our brain to form. Because in the natural sense, it is the senses that gives information. It is the real world that is our cognitive source. Cognitive tools are the senses. Cognitive process is playful exploration of the world. And the understanding itself is something what can be called a self-organization. You don't reason, you don't use reason to conclude because conclusion is happening within you. So I find that there is a complete distortion of cognitive system when you become illiterate. And it is it is the literates who are working against life and against the world, you know, against the, who is creating all the ecological crisis. It is the literates. That is because they are alienated from their own bodies, you know. So because literacy, what it does is to kill your body, kill your senses, kill your deep connection with things around you. Because you read a book and you think you have understood. So you're all the time in the mind, all the time reading, reading more and more books, you know. So I found that this is actually the biggest crisis of modern humans. And uh, and, and the most misunderstood uh, beings in the human human world, human modern humans, are the chi is childhood. Because children are the worst treated, ill-treated by modern people. But they, they assume that they are giving good, good time to children. But what children need is not what they give. Because children actually need cognitive freedom. Cognitive autonomy, you know, that is precisely what the modern people don't give. You see, I always feel say that a, a, a human child is actually born with absolute openness, but it comes with total inherent, it is already filled with software to understand the world, but it is coming as a potential. What it requires is a space, an open space, an environment of freedom, an environment of trust, where they can flower, you know, Awaken to what they already have, but uh, that is not the way modernity looks at children. They are ill-treating them by helping them, teaching them, you know, uh, even giving toys, I think, is a crime. Uh, because the very notion of toy is a modern invention, because children, for children, any object is a toy, potential toy. Every activity is, is, is done playfully and they turn all activities into play. Uh, and any object is a potential toy, but that is not the way modernity looks at it, you know? So modernity has product, productified everything. Everything is a product for, for modernity. And the first product modernity created is knowledge. You see, I, I hardly ever hear anybody talking about knowing, indigenous knowing. Everybody talks about indigenous knowledge, modern knowledge, you know? Modernity, of course, you have only knowledge. You don't have knowing. Oh, very few people, people who are true scientists are in the mode of indigenous mindset because true scientists are somebody who is continuously exploring and not not taking a position like a, a, a strong uh, conclusion you know they are they are open to exploration they are not holding on to rigid you know it is actually the mediocre the technologist who who because they are not they are only interested in applying knowledge so they don't know they don't have to even know that whether it's right or wrong whether it will destroy the earth nothing so technologies are absolutely insensitive people who are, uh, you know, I, I actually call it, uh, you know, people use the word creativity. Uh, I use another word for defining this activity. I call it destructivity. It's not creativity. So negative creativity is destructivity. True creativity is, is for sustenance of life, not for your factory, not for your well-being, your individual well-being. Creativity is actually a life-given ability to sustain life, to create harmony, with, you know, in nature, with, with living beings, you know. But uh, what we have today is destructivity, and that, but of course, modern people celebrate that as creativity, you know. And, and uh, again, coming back to the childhood, what I want to say is that one very important thing is that children became, children became to be treated as incapable and who need help with the uh, with the spread of literacy uh, because literacy then began to mediate your process of engaging with the world 
you know otherwise your senses nobody needs to tell you look or you know because you are seeing it's not, seeing is not a choice our senses are functioning without any choice choose choosing you know it's functioning so you don't have to become a mediator for with for the child to know the world now the child is knowing the world but the moment literacy was invented was you know uh, and then literacy became the means the medium to understand then child childhood became a childhood of incapability that needs intervention that needs help so this is a very very uh, and other major thing with literacy is that uh, i always feel that two things that impacted uh, human journey till now biologically are one shift from raw food to cooked food you know and second is from orality to literacy it it actually changes biologically others were social changes that was happening you know when from uh, you know from uh, uh, what you call that from hunter gatherer to other types you know to maybe uh, farming and all that no it didn't impact you biologically at that deep level deep level biological transformation took place as far as i can i can think of two things one raw food to cook food uh, we are we are actually meant for eating raw food and i'm sure in the in the in the initial uh, uh, you know maybe for few thousand years we would have been having lots of problem adjusting to cooked food because that is not the body body chemicals are not meant for that you know so but because of the maybe the taste we liked it or something for some for some reason like that uh, we continued to eat and maybe the body then slowly 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 got adapted to that a similar thing began to take place after the 14th 13th century when printing press was established in germany the whole europe is in 300 years uh, you know literacy spread like anything slowly 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 the senses began to dysfunction senses no longer function and and other very important thing is that for illiterates the condition the context of knowing is unknown they are not dealing with ready made knowledge concluded knowledge they are experiencing knowing you know so there is always a, a open ended exploration that is possible there is necessity for observation for development of patience everything the context is there but for somebody who is literate none of this is required actually because literate is already dealing with ready made knowledge observation is not required patience is not required the only thing that is required is reading thinking analyzing and storing in the brain that's all actually analysis itself is a mistaken idea of a modern mind because what are you analyzing what are you reasoning with you, you can only reason with what is known that itself shows that reasoning is what prevents any open ended creativity you know reasoning is nothing but permutation combination of what is known organizing in certain way and then you put it together uh, you know so uh, and and i i actually would like to completely challenge the modern cognitive science and various experiments they are doing because it is it is it doesn't look at children as the uh, point for exploration i always say that if you want to understand like i mean the way i mean everybody knows this that if you want to understand life you study cell because cell is the basic unit of life you know similarly if you want to study human being study children but then we must ask who's children because i feel that uh if you want to study children we must study children who are least conditioned you know least uh help who are who have cognitive autonomy who have freedom who who can you know really uh, respond the way the nature has intended them to explore you know it's like this a parallel thing i always draw is between suppose you want to study dogs you can study the you can there are four ways i thought one could do one is read a book because that is what 90% will do read books on dogs and conclude their understanding the second one will could be to read the or the study the dogs pet dogs that are easily available to you everywhere the third situation is study a dog in the street and the fourth and the best situation is go to a jungle and study them there you know because that is where they are naturally there their responses are absolutely natural you know so our whole modern understanding of children is completely flawed because this is all being studied based on based on all the conclusions are based on western childhood western childhood is very conditioned very me mechanized controlled you know planned helped uh 
so children do not have any uh, uh, you know natural uh, condition to even respond in any way or no so uh, my actually present preoccupation is to re look at what is a child because i think the whole modern crisis can be understood uh, under and can be traced to a wrong childhood you know it can be understood a wrong childhood with the whole modern crisis is because of we undergoing a completely alienated completely uh, unnatural childhood you know right from 2 years 3 years they are being sent to schools and, and i think the biggest crime that we are committing against life is schools and of course all the other productification that is happening as far as child is concerned toys are absolutely dangerous for children which children do not need toys at all so my vision is actually to have a childhood which is completely free from all this modern constructs where the child is freely having space and time to explore the real world not the world that is created through ai and you know all this internet and all that you know you see one very important thing the cognitive science lessons that we are we are we are neglecting is that whatever the child experiences will shape the way the brain uh, gets wired so when you treat the child as somebody incapable you teach them all the time you make them read all the time what is the kind of brain that will get developed it will learn to obey it will learn to analyze it will learn to read it will never learn to explore because senses are completely numbed by 3 4 years you know now even at a younger age they are be, they are starting to teach children through all kinds of you know uh, what they call that some card system and all that has been invented you know so to me the whole uh, so i am actually doing what i am also doing let me tell you i have been doing lots of workshops called do nothing parenting workshops do nothing parenting workshops and all my uh, understanding comes from learning from indigenous communities because there there is no parenting at all in fact the very parenting idea is a very modern educated people's thing no and that itself shows how alienated this modern humans are the only species that requires uh, parenting is the modern humans no that itself shows you know our uh, tragedy actually so that is one thing that i am doing uh, and one very important thing i would say wish to say is that i am not against literacy i am not against digital tools but they have a place and if you don't understand the place they will take over you and this is what has happened so i actually find this uh, digital tools very very uh, useful uh, and i want to use it in order to get uh, because i am planning to get help from whoever can to create a web portal for parents to actually come together and learn from each other their observations of their child not from experts today the whole problem is that we have we have created parasites knowledge parasites none of the educated know anything they have to ask some expert who will tell you what to do so there are parenting coaches in all kinds of coaches ha hanging around you know this throws how badly uh, you know uh, the human being has become you know in order to live you need a coach to do this you need a coach to need that need a coach i don't understand this whole alienation that is happening and and nobody is really seriously thinking about it no everybody is thinking that this is all good you know more and more create more and more livelihood so so this web web uh, portal that i want to create is that i wish to engage parents to to actually create an environment in their respective homes an environment of freedom an environment of equality equality meaning uh, you see the moment you bring kitchen from 3 feet to to the floor you start you know making food at home children will begin to see processes happening now their whole exposure in modern world is products nothing is being made in front of them at least start making food you know and it should be done on the ground so that you know children have access to that so today the whole modern world is actually for youth it is not for children not for old age not for women it is for the masculine youth uh, the whole modern world is designed for so so you need to create an environment of freedom for children least amount of uh, furniture so that they have enough space to roam around crawl around you know 
and then no toys in the house because the moment you give a toy then that, that will be turned into a play and their playfulness will be killed by the process so i wish that you know such a situation is created and parents begin to observe very sensitively document what they see upload it onto the website web portal and create a discussion amongst parents to understand what is that children are doing everywhere because you see one very important thing is that i have documented thousands of videos and images uh, of spontaneous activities that children do from these i have i was able to decode the principle behind the activities that they do the blueprint or or the grammar of children's activities you know and i i realized that uh, even though the content may change the framework doesn't change you know it's like grammar grammar in language no you you, you may be you can speak maybe german or 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 any other language french or you know malayalam or hindi or depending upon the context but this the way of learning it doesn't change nor the nor the context doesn't change you know it's only the language that changes so there are certain fundamental principles of cognition the 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 framework the grammar doesn't change this is what i found that the way nature has enabled us to understand the real world there is a clear framework and that framework will only operate if you don't interfere with children so this is something that i have been able to document and uh, i want to establish a cognition lab lab is a, a wrong wrong word but anyway I, i'm just you, i have no other word to use right now uh, which is to it's a more open source for people to uh, look at what children actually do with their free you know if, if, if there is no interference so that is the kind of uh, you know i'm i just told you my introduction with my vision you know yeah so reimagining childhoods is my you know you see when i adopted i adopted a child when she came to my life i took three decisions never say no to her always follow her meaning let her decide what she wants to do and third never lie to her no lying at all and these three things can we create an environment once again in modern modern situations where we don't have to see this Show, say this because this is what i learned from indigenous communities indigenous communities you hardly ever say no to a child they don't guide what you should do you know and hardly any time you see somebody telling lies because there's no need of telling lies you see so because you don't tell no to the child the child doesn't know what is anger the anger stems from continuously telling don't do this don't do that don't do you know when you restrict that is when everything begins to uh, distort and modernity is a place for distortion because it's always under restriction that ch child is what about and see even if the parent wants the conditions are so bad you know all kinds of food which are quite poisonous are, are is being dumped chemical food is being dumped i don't think any, anybody uh, you know who is half intelligent will agree with the kind of food that is given so so we have to actually rebuild the world you know starting from what what is the right condition for a child what kind of food we should be eating what kind of you know what kind of uh, activities that we should be doing simple activities now everybody is busy but what is happening finally is distraction no i think uh, we i don't think we we can neglect the role of usa in all this you know you you have you have to bring in them the biggest villains to to situate everything else you know everybody is a villain i am not telling that it's only the us that is the villain but i think see i would think that literacy is the beginning of our downfall literacy i would actually because you see see people talk about reductionism as if that poor man from france that philosopher did it no to me reduction is reductionism is from learning the world when you fell down learning the word that is reductionism you reduced your cognitive source from the real world to the written word that and that is actually the fundamental cause for 
reductionism because you are no longer using your body. The fragmentation of body and mind happens there. So our first violence is towards our, ourselves. The mind completely dominating the body and neglecting it, destroying it. In fact, I would say that the whole modernity can be looked at as the, the, the mind's uh, overpowering of the body. And it is doing everything to do that. And the rest is all repercussions of all that, you know, whether it is America, whether it is, you know, because see, today in modernity, we have only masculinity. And that is the cause for violence. And masculinity is because uh, literacy demands masculinity. It doesn't require femininity. It doesn't require intuition. It doesn't require body. It doesn't require senses, sensitivity. Nothing is called for. So I would say that, you know, this uh, uh, non, uh, this wise way of using literacy is the reason. And, you know, actually, if you see rationality itself, and, and I also find the strange way in which uh, modernity appropriate words and always justify what it does. You know, for example, boldom. Boldom is celebrated in modernity, where they say creativity comes from boldom. But boredom is a mental disease. It's only the Western world keeps telling that boredom is good. Because you go into any indigenous communities, you will not find anybody sitting bored. They are mentally, they are absolutely happy. That doesn't mean that they did not create anything. You know? And, and the other thing is rationality. Rationality is being celebrated in an absolutely wrong way. Because you see, this, this issue of uh, understanding, you know, let's explore what is understanding. So in the Western world, understanding is the result of reasoning, rationality. You know, but I would say that you, you, to use a cognitive science word, self-organization is the way true understanding takes place. Self-organization is something that happens to you, you don't do it. And for self-organization, the inputs are primarily sensorial, what you've experienced. And language is only one small part of it. But whereas the whole modern conclusions are coming only from language. You know, whereas when, when the body is making or when the being is concluding, it is taking information, data from the whole, whole inputs, you know. See, let's take the example of mother tongue. How did we learn mother tongue? Nobody was teaching. None of us learned grammar. None of us asked the name of any words. There was no conscious learning. But we were able to use language in, in, a, in a good way. How did it happen? It can only happen because, because it is not your ego that is functioning. It is your whole being that is making the connections and concluding. Language is spontaneous. How it is happening from us. It is not a conscious mind uh, uh, reason oriented activity that we are doing. But the moment you shift from that to, uh, you know, learning a second language, especially in the modern sense, then you begin to have, you need to have, you know, you will think about grammar, you think about meaning and all that, you know, which again, which suddenly becomes a mental activity from an experiential contextual activity. It becomes a mental activity. So I find this, this, uh, uh, the root cause, again, I think we need to, come back to our alienation from life. See the other, you know, for example, if you, you know, people do have certain conflicts, but people don't carry it all the time. You know, I remember reading a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, book by Hemindorf, who was an anthropologist living in India. This is about the Naga. He was uh, studying in the, studying the tribal belt of Northeast. In, of India, he was mentioning one very interesting thing. There was a fight between two tribes. So one group had gone and lit fire to their whole, uh, you know, village. Everything was in flames. Uh, so there was a lot of problems. And then the the British whoever was in charge at that time, the British, uh, you know, uh, they they called for a compromise. 
so uh, so the both the community people had come and hemindo was also also there and uh, then he found that after about 20 30 minutes uh, the people who were in conflict with each other they started talking about how that thing was happening they were laughing and all that you know they had completely forgotten this is how children are actually children is the problem with modernity is that it doesn't know how to leave what is not required you know the, the emotions like anger fear these are temporary emotions the condition should be you know you must the system especially in indigenous communities you may get angry you express it but within few minutes you forget it also this is how children are so i'm not talking anything uh, you know uh, that is so strange every child is like this they get angry but within few minutes they forget it within few seconds they forget their anger they are crying they fall down they cry but again within two minutes few seconds they forget that and they back to normal so this is the nature of life nature of human beings but because modernity creates a situation where every day it is subjected to fear every day it is subjected to tension every day it is subjected to stress these temporary qualities become permanent that get fixated this is what happens and and one more thing i want i wish to say that you know the mind is continuously fooling the modern modern humans now because now suddenly they have invented a term called embodiment you know and i i always feel that mind is playing one more trick because the people who are talking about embodiment are talking from the mind they don't have not understood body they are talking through the mind you know with the framework of the mind they are talking about the body so they are doing all kinds of strange experiments exercises and all that you know embodiment workshops they are absolute nonsense actually and i i am finding that the mind is continuously playing fool and and they, they are very successfully playing fool with human beings